Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Bernie with CG Spectrum. Happy Monday. Hope everyone is doing well and that you guys all had a uh, good weekend. Um, what did you all do this past weekend? For me, what did I do? <laughs> it's one of those weekends when it, where it went by so fast, I don't even remember what happened. Uh, I think I just played a lot of games with my kids. Uh, started playing more Roblox with them. They're both bugging me to play uh, different games with them. And um, if I don't divide up the time with them equally, they make sure to point it out. <laughs> Even if it's like off by, I don't know, like five minutes or something, they're like, hey, you played a little bit more with the other one. Uh, <laughs> so I was telling my wife to uh, start playing games with them too. I'm like, come on, you gotta play with them too. I don't have all day to play with them. So <laughs> we gotta divide up the time when we play with them. Um, yeah, we're playing a game called uh, Boxing League within Roblox and um, also a game called uh, Bed Wars in Roblox. Anyways, all kid stuff. But they're so much better than I am. I, some of those games, it's kind of like Bed Wars kind of looks like... Uh, Minecraft, right? Where you make these blocks. Um, yeah, they're all like these cubes, right? And then you have to make a bridge and cross over to a different island. But I can't even control it well enough. Where, I, like, what what will happen if if I don't make the bridge wide enough? I will just fall to my death. So um, I don't know how kids are so good at controlling it on the iPad. Like on the computer, I can do it with the mouse and keyboard. But on the iPad, I cannot control the character. I always fall to my death. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Renee? Renee says uh, she drew and went rock painting with the family this weekend. Rock painting? What is that exactly? Um, is that what I think it is? Hey, what's up, Glitter? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Glitter says Minesweeper is the best game, hands down. I used to play Minesweeper, uh, are you talking about the old school, like the original Minesweeper? That's what we used to play when we didn't have any games. <laughs> when there were no options for cool games. Uh, but yeah, I used to play that a lot. Just cause when I was bored <laughs> on the computer. Anyways, today, uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna draw a dragon chicken. So this is my quick sketch of a chicken uh, that I looked off of, uh, I was looking at reference. <clears throat> and this chicken is based off of a Rhode Island chicken variety or breed. Uh, they're kind of like a reddish brown color. Uh, we have four of these. And uh, one of them is my one of my kids' uh, favorite, or both of my kids' favorite chicken. They named it Dragon's Breath. Um, yeah, so we're gonna try to make this look like a dragon a little bit, a dragon chicken, <laughs> if that makes sense. So uh, we'll work off of this and add some dragon elements to it. Maybe we'll have it breathing fire or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Just having fun. Uh, the other reason why we're doing this is because I know a lot of my students, like, if they have issues, um, I mean, it's just an exercise for concepting. If they have issues like creating their own concepts or they're running out of ideas and things like that, as an exercise, I'll have them use reference, do a study off of reference, and then uh, take that and create their own concept on top of it, right? Change it up a bit. Uh, to practice um, bringing in their studies, whatever they're, they're learning from the studies, into their concept. Uh, basically merging the two, right? So I have uh, students do these exercises at times. So this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> uh, Renee says, you just find rocks and paint them. 
There's a small community in my aunt's area that paint and trade rocks. Uh, to take a rock, you gotta paint and leave a rock. Oh, that's cool. That's a fun uh, community thing, art community. Uh, I had a class in high school that was called uh, Community Art, I think that's what it was called. And we would basically just use art to connect with uh, different groups of people um, yeah, within the community or even at school. So there were kids that, uh, <laughs> I don't remember what you call it, kids who weren't uh, doing too well in class, right? Uh, in their classes. And then we would have a class, uh, yeah, for them, uh, where we would uh, relate or have some kind of art activity to engage them, basically. And it was a good class, yeah. It was fun. Uh, my wife told me that she used to, uh, paint on rocks when she was a kid and she would try to sell them to her neighbors and I don't think anybody bought them <laughs> but I thought it was funny or kind of cute that she would paint on rocks and try to sell them uh, yeah I wish she still had uh, some of them somewhere so I could look at it It'd be kind of fun um Yeah, anyways, that sounds like a fun activity, actually. That gives me some ideas. Hmm. Anyways. All right, let's look at this chicken. I never thought chickens were cool until I owned chickens. Uh, they have, like, interesting behaviors that they do. Um, that... I don't know, like, I could even just stare at them and they're fun to watch. <laughs> they're cute to me. Uh, anyways, let's keep going. Alright, so I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna play around um, and try some uh, different uh, explorations for this dragon chicken character or creature. So in order to not be too distracted by my original chicken drawing. I'm going to really lower the opacity and what I'm going to do to start off is just block, try some block ins. Again, I'm trying to keep myself loose because I do feel kind of a little, uh, I don't know, uptight right now. I don't know if you know what I mean. I don't feel that loose, so. Whenever I feel that way, I don't do drawings because the drawings make me feel like I have to be even more accurate. Uh, and I'm fi I get fixated on details, so. I'm gonna block it in. When you paint on the rocks, Renee, uh, what do you use? Is it acrylic? And do you uh, seal them after you're done? I think this part of the chicken, like the red part on top of the head is called a comb. I might be wrong, but I'm gonna call it a comb. And these things, like these red things on the bottom of like the jowls or the uh, neck area, I think you call them waddles, so I'm, I am going to call them waddles. I might be wrong again, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to still incorporate that in there somehow. It still has to look like, I want it to still look like a chicken.
so it, it might it's probably gonna look silly I'm imagining this whole creature is gonna look a bit silly I don't I don't know if it's gonna look cool <laughs> but that's all right with me and these things are cool to do too because um sometimes again I know a lot of artists concept artists or students that um get too serious with their art sometimes if that makes sense they get so uptight about things and they're like oh it has to be like this it has to be like that and they forget how to have fun with things always make sure to remind yourself to have fun i mean if we're not having fun doing art why are we doing this right uh, i don't know why at least um if it wasn't fun i wouldn't want to do it um so remind yourself to loosen up once in a while i'm not saying you should always be doing silly drawings right or um, these looser like fun explorations but uh, it's a part of it it's something that some a lot of artists need to do once in a while to loosen up uh, mentally even right and creatively just loosening it up having fun knowing how to just have fun and play right not to take everything too serious uh, in terms of like content or whatever uh, yeah and just doing something different i mention this all the time doing something different once in a while different from what you're used to doing is great in terms of uh, opening up your creativity uh, I remember in college, a lot. some of my uh, instructors would remind us or talk about how to be creative, like things you can do to be creative or to have a creative mindset. And one of the instructors said that they would never take the same route to work, to, like to the school um, in the morning. They would try different routes because if they're always taking the same exact route, uh, you know, they get into this monotonous, like, uh, habitual way of thinking and seeing things, right? So they would always take a different route to work. Sounds kind of crazy. I'm not saying that's what you should do, because I definitely do not do that. Uh, but it's interesting because it makes sense. Like, you could apply that kind of thinking to different things, right? In this case, it's, um, again, just doing something you're not used to doing. Doing something different to get yourself thinking differently. Another uh, way of seeing that or applying that is when you're doing figure drawing, let's say you normally start with like the head, right? For example, a lot of people start with the head and then they draw in the figure, the rest of the figure. Some people start with the torso and hips, right? And then they draw in the rest of the figure some people start with the gesture like the whole gesture right line and then they draw the figure in what you can do and some an exercise that we did in figure drawing class is we will start in places that we normally don't start like we'll start with the hand like we'll look at a, a figure drawing uh i mean a photo and then we'll start with the hand and then go from there what it, and it really changes the way you view the figure and the way you approach drawing and it forces you to really observe what's really going on instead of being in that like habitual like mindset where you're like oh i'm gonna draw this gesture line again i'm gonna start with the torso again does that make sense it, it makes you just kind of do what's routine for yourself right instead of seeing things in a fresh way Hopefully that makes sense and that helps some of you. Okay, I'm gonna try to figure out what to do with this tail. Cause maybe I'll do something like that.
Looks like a scorpion now. <laughs> scorpion chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that that tail looks too uh, stiff, huh? Uh, I gotta loosen it up a bit. I was just trying to go with the curve of the chicken, like the natural curve of the chicken. Uh, but maybe that's too stiff looking. I didn't want to make the tail too long, because then... Ah, whatever. I'm going to grab the tail and try to adjust it lower. That looks a little better, to me at least. Let's try that. Uh, Renee says, I want to say cheap acrylic uh, mom got from the dollar store. We don't seal our rocks, but I've seen rocks with a glossy finish. So I s assume others do seal theirs. Cool. Yeah. You, yeah, you gave me an, a, an idea for an activity that I want to do with, um, with some of the people I know. A, a part of the community I'm, I'm with at my church, actually. Uh, we might do some painting on rocks soon. <laughs> so that's cool. Thanks. Uh, Renee says, I know there are people who sell painted rocks on Etsy. So some probably get quality paints and stuff. Oh, that's interesting. I want to look it up. Like, again, when I think of painting on rocks, I guess I think of like stuff that kids do, right? But I'm sure there's like crazy looking ones. So uh, I want to check it out real quick. Oops. Oh wow, there are crazy looking ones. Some are exactly the way I imagined them to be. <laughs> and then some of them are really, others are really cool, like different, super detailed looking. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, glitter ass. So why a chicken? Cause, uh, th that's what's around me. This is like, a. Y you heard a local food. This is a local uh, inspiration. <laughs> Support local uh, stores. This is local inspiration. Local getting inspired by what's around you. And I have chickens, so that's what I'm being inspired by. <laughs> and my kids. My kids like chickens because they're their pets. I guess part of it selfishly is me trying to um, show my kids also like, you know, like how to incorporate like, like what to be inspired by, like stuff around them and how to incorporate that into their own art. Uh, I think subconsciously that's also what I was thinking, uh, why I wanted to draw a chicken. Um, again, and the other reason why is because some people take this stuff too serious. They always think it has to be cool, like some kind of, I don't know, like what, what do they usually combine with the dragon, like a sea dragon or a, I don't know, like something cool. Maybe, maybe in this case it would be like a, if it's a bird, it would be a, a crane dragon or a, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Or an owl dragon or a hawk dragon or a falcon dragon or an eagle dragon. This is just a chicken. So I'm just having fun with it. Uh, 
uh, I forgot. <laughs> I was kind of being absent-minded here. I was just drawing normal chicken feet. Uh, I think I want to go a little crazier. Let's see. I'm going to put some scales on her chest. Why not a chicken? How many chicken drawings have dragons have you seen? It's actually like another reason, uh, another way you can see it is um, when people are looking through your portfolio, I'm talking about, I guess I can't speak for hiring managers, but I would say for at least myself, like an art director looking to hire someone, right? It's refreshing to see stuff in their uh, portfolio that's different. I'm not saying, you again, that you guys have to do silly stuff, but seeing something that's different and how seeing how an artist tackled it, right? How they handled that, that how they figured out a problem, like in this situation, it's how do you combine a chicken and a dragon? That's the uh, problem, right? That's the task. It's more interesting for me to see that because all I see all day long are the typical dragons, right? So why not see a chicken dragon and how the artist tackled it? It's much more interesting to me, personally. I'm. I, it would be weird if they were all chickens <laughs> on, in your portfolio, right? That's weird, okay? I'm like, okay, that's enough chickens. But if there's a couple of these just to spice things up in your portfolio, I think that's awesome. It makes you stand out. And again, like to see how you tackled this problem makes it interesting to me to look at. If it's just another dragon, I'm, I don't really care, you know, it's just another dragon. Unless it's done very, very well, I'm not going to care to look at it. It won't hold my interest for very long, right? make these claws bigger and joints a little larger second I'm doing my stream it's I'm doing my stream what's wrong with you I thought something was wrong and you're trying to tell me all right see it sorry that was my brother he was bothering me I thought sometimes he'll tell me if there's something wrong with the stream so uh that he was going to tell me the audio was off or something. But he was just called to tell me that he wants to go to Legoland. Because <laughs> he knows um, I'll be going to Legoland tomorrow with my kids. And he likes Legos. <laughs> Who still plays with Legos? Do any of you still play with Legos?
All right, the wings. I'll, I do want to make the wings more dragon-like. Renee asked, do your kids watch your streams? Uh, once in a while. They don't watch the whole thing, but they'll just like scroll through it just to see what I did. And they think it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Glitter says, uh, goldfish dragon. That sounds like a cool idea, actually. Glitter says, I do, I make models versions. Oh, of Legos? Cool. Hey, what's up, Indulger? All right, let's figure out how to do this, uh, do these wings. I don't think I fully, un I still don't understand how chicken's wings works. Actually, I guess it's kind of like this. Yeah, I guess it's something like that. They look, they're pretty complex looking, the way they fold over. I tried, I had to spread my um, chicken's wings open so that I could cut their feathers, like their flight feathers. Um, so I took a good look at it, but it just looks odd when it's uh, folded over. It's kind of hard to understand what's going on. Uh, I guess I should look at the anatomy, but I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see. I might just ignore most of this. So I don't really understand it too well. I'll do something like that. I want it to look somewhat natural. I don't want it to look like it's tacked on. Hmm. Guess they're kind of going to look like bat wings, though. Mm, it doesn't look cool uh, all folded up. Dragon wings in general don't look cool folded up, do they? Let me look it up real quick. Usually when I draw uh, dragon wings, they were always opened up a bit. So I'm realizing, hmm, I'm not really sure what dragon wings look like when they're all folded up. What does that mean, Rory? Throwback to us figuring out wings and concepts? Uh oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh I know I know what you mean. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um yeah, you you should definitely look at a reference when you're doing this stuff. Rory's good at uh good at with bird bird wings. I know. <laughs> you studied all that stuff. Uh, this this is not going to be bird wings though. Again, it's going to be like more like bat wings, I guess. That's what it should, or what I'm trying to do. Maybe I'll just have it opened up, but I don't know if there's enough room here for it to look right. Maybe I'll make it like tiny wings, <laughs> cute cute wings.
Uh, by the way, it's good to hear from you, Rory. I haven't seen you around in a long time. Are you in these streams? I didn't even know that. <laughs> haven't chatted with you in a long time. <clears throat> How are you doing? Actually, I just heard from one of my old students um, today as well. Like, I got an email from him just randomly, which is cool. And, uh, yeah, he was just telling me how, I think it's been like over a year and a half since I last talked to him. But, um, yeah, he was just telling me how things that I used to talk to him about, like techniques and like um, the thought process behind painting, like how it just recently in the past few months clicked for him. So I thought that was interesting. I was like, oh, wow. But yeah, sometimes certain ideas, <laughs> it takes time to like all make sense. You know what I mean? It depends on the person, right? And where they're at. Uh, but certain things may not make too much sense at the time when you're learning it, but later on it could make sense. So, uh, yeah, that's great. It was good to hear that. Anyways, I'm trying to just mess around with this wing here. I don't like this shape. I'll make this shorter. See how messy my sketches are? I take some pride in how messy my sketches are. Indulger says, wouldn't it mimic a bat's wing when folded? Uh, yeah, but again, bat wings don't, in my opinion, they don't that look that cool either when they're folded up. They look kind of weird, all wrinkly and weird looking. So I don't want to really do that. Uh, Rory says, uh, you would think years of study and scientific illustration would mean you paint wings perfectly. Uh... <laughs> I hang around sometimes, the stream is always at our old class time. Oh yeah, it is, huh? I forgot about that. Uh, Rory says, I actually started painting traditionally with acrylics again. Cool. Uh, relearning it has helped me figure out how to paint better digitally, which is interesting. <clears throat> That's awesome. I want to paint traditionally again. That's why I'm thinking of that like rock painting idea that Renee was talking about. I want to try something like that just for fun. It's one of those things again, like just to break away with uh, from what you're used to doing every day. Just to be creative and just to have fun. That's I think that those are great activities, great exercises for any artist. Doing something different. Uh, Glitter says bat wings are just bat hands. Yeah, you're right. That is true. Oops. Alright, I'm gonna have to probably... I'm gonna grab this whole thing. Make some more room for my... Oh, no. Make some more room for myself. Oh, why does it keep doing that? 
I'm on the wrong layer. All right, cool. So I'm going to bring that forward. I'm going to grab this tail and make it longer. I need more length because of those wings. It's going to make the proportions of that tail look odd or look short. So I'm going to lengthen that up. So the proportions look a little better. Yeah, I'll just open up the wings. Why not? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Dragon's breath. Yeah, the two chickens that my kids like the most, they're like the nicest chickens. Dragon's breath and fuzzball. They're the most friendliest and social. They like being petted and they like being held. Uh, they'll, they're not skittish at all. They just walk up to you. That's, let's go with this. Um, the silhouette might change quite a bit as I move forward with this, but um, I think this is good to uh, continue with. Um, so I'm just gonna go with this. I'm gonna draw in some sketches for the in, what the inside, like the interior designs, <laughs> interior design the interior of the uh, chicken could look like, like the eyes and stuff like that. So I'll do that real quick first before I really move on. Some of these details are confusing me or distracting me, so I'm just gonna get rid of all of that. And I got to decide what details of the chicken I really want to keep so it still looks like a chicken and which details I want to change so it looks more like a dragon or dragon inspired at least. What aspects of it I want to exaggerate. Kind of fun, silly and fun. Maybe I will try to make the details more realistic just for fun, just to see what it looks like. If I really try to sell this as something believable, that might be interesting instead of stylized.
That means I gotta put a lot more finer details into this. If I really want to sell it as realistic or believable. It looks like a zombie chicken right now. Zombie dragon chicken. <laughs> Which is not bad. <laughs> uh, Renee says, it is fun. However, I have a pretty competitive family. My mom was concerned about losing to children and my cousin was ranking everyone's rocks, saying that we could only earn second place if you paint. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I can relate to um, your family's dynamics. Um, some of my family members are very competitive too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to mention who, but some of my family members will not, they don't even want to lose to my kids. So they'll be playing a game with them. And like when I play games with kids, I don't care about winning. I just want them to have fun, right? I'll lose on purpose, you know what I mean? So they could have fun. Um, I'll still make it competitive, right? But at the end, I'll, you know, I'll give them room to win, you know what I mean? But some of my family members will not let the kids win. I don't know why, I don't know what's wrong with them. But yeah. Look at these waddles, putting spikes on, on its waddles, little tiny spikes. It's a zombie uh, chicken now, zombie dragon chicken. Maybe it doesn't need teeth. Maybe I'll give it just some tiny teeth. The teeth make it look kind of weird. Oh, I guess the dragon's supposed to have scales, huh? <laughs> Alright, I'll indicate some scales here. Oh, I didn't want it to be too crazy looking. But I guess I could always just indicate some scales. Noisy looking. Let's go to the chest real quick just to figure out what this looks like before you, we move forward too much. I'm trying to think of, yeah, I do want feathers. I want to retain some of the feathers, maybe kind of like the way they depict 
some dinosaurs, right? Where they have scales and feathers together. I think that look kind of be cool. I don't know if that would be it though. So I'll have to decide where to include uh, the feathers. There's order in the chaos of these sketches. <laughs> At least I can see it. <laughs> All right. So there's some separation here in the chicken's uh, feather thickness. Yeah, I noticed that the feathers um, in the more mature chickens, uh, right around the neck area, transition to the body, it's a lot thicker or sharper. Um, I guess that's why they draw it like this in the cartoons, right? Um, but it's true. So, let me see. Oh, Dragon's Breath looks kind of scary. <laughs> um, hmm. Looks kind of scary. I don't know if my kids are going to like that dragon's breath looks scary, but maybe they'll think it's cool, I don't know. It's a zombie chicken. I guess I'll put some feathers on the back of the neck, that's what I'll do. Yeah. And I'll transition into these, uh, the scales on the belly area. Yeah, whenever you want something to look more believable, there has to be some transition design going on. So that's something you always want to think about is how do I transition things like different materials, different um, textures, things like that. Uh, Glitter says, uh, big question is beast. Wait, what's your question, Glitter? I can't even understand what you wrote. Here, big question is beast is size of a normal chicken or size of dragon? Oh, okay, I get what you're asking. Uh, this is, huh, that's a good question. Let's just make it the size of a normal chicken or around the size of a normal chicken. You know, I, I don't know what the name of the dinosaurs are, but there's those small looking dinosaurs that actually look like chickens. Uh, I just remember seeing them in uh, those dinosaur posters. You know, you know what I mean? Those tiny dinosaurs that are like slivering around at the bottom of the big dinosaur feet. That's what I'm thinking of, I guess, for this. Hey guys, if you like stream the stream, please give me a like. I'd appreciate that. I'll be back in a minute, okay? I'm gonna take a quick break. All right, I'll be right back.
Hey, all right, I'm back. Uh, Renee's asking, do you think there is a wrong way to do anatomy studies or maybe even an optimal way? Yeah, so <laughs> that's what I, I get that question a lot <clears throat> in general, like about drawing or learning art. Uh, there are optimal ways, of course. Um, there's different, obviously, opinions about what that optimal way is. <clears throat> but yes, um, there are more efficient ways of, of learning art or doing figure drawings or anatomy studies. I can't really go over all of it here. Um, it's just hard to explain it without showing you things. Um, at, having said that, <clears throat> honestly, the uh, the main issue that I see with students isn't that they're not drawing in the most optimal way or studying anatomy studies in the most optimal way, but it's just that they don't do it enough. That's 99% of the problem is that students simply don't, don't draw enough. They don't do enough studies, not even close. Um, most students on average, I would say, in terms of how many studies they do, are doing, they're probably only doing maybe 10% of what they actually should be doing. Does that make any sense? So it's drastically off in the amount of studies they're doing and how much time they're spending on doing studies. Uh, it's, it's completely off usually. So for example, if, if you're doing only for example one figure drawing a, a day you should be doing 10 right as an example i'm just saying that's how off things are usually um yeah so that is the main reason main issue that i see but if for example if you are doing the right amount okay if you're doing like 10 figure drawings a day as an example i'm just using that as an example you're doing the right amount then yes, in that case, I would say, figure out how to be more efficient, you know, for sure. And that could mean uh, following a specific method of figure drawing, right? And again, there's so many different things out there. Um, and I'm not really going to suggest anything here, but look it up. It's on, you know, you could Google it. There's stuff on uh, Gumroad. There's stuff on um, different specific private websites, right? Just look up Google um, methods for figure drawing. Uh, there's many, many different kinds and not every method works for every artist, right? You're going to have to find out which method works for you. Uh, and that's just by trying it. You got to try, it's trying stuff, you know. Uh, but definitely the shortcut way of learning how to do um, figure drawings well is by trying other people's methods that are similar to your way of going about things. In terms of just anatomy studies, like specifically anatomy studies, right? Like muscle, the skeletal structure, all that stuff. You could even just look at bodybuilding books, right? Uh, basically, uh, the studies or the reference you're using has to be super clear. That's the main thing. Uh, nothing should be ambiguous. Uh, you should be able to see the shape of the muscles, where it attaches, right? In terms of on the skeleton all the connection points, how it's um, overlapping other muscles, things like that. So I know students that use bodybuilding books and um, things like that. Or you could look up just on Amazon, right? Anatomy for artists. Look that up and you'll get a good amount of books that show up. The way we did it in college was, um, well, we, we did multiple things in college, but the, the one method that I thought was really helpful and cool and different, I guess, was we actually sculpted um, a figure using Super Sculpey, or sorry, it wasn't Super Sculpey, it was like oil clay. And uh, we sculpted each uh, muscle uh, and we attached it onto our, uh, our figure. And so there was no way of cheating, right? We had to m create each muscle and attach it where it's supposed to go and all that stuff. So half of our figure, it's like those uh, figures, 
sculptures that you see for sale on Amazon. We had to, um, half of it was a uh, skeleton and half of it was muscle. So we, we learned how to do everything that way. We couldn't cheat. So that's another thing you can try. I would say that's harder to do without instruction, but it's not impossible. I don't think I ever would have done that on my own, to be honest, just because like, I'm thinking of like, oh, I gotta make the skeletal structure of it. Like, I mean, not the actual skeletal uh, structure of the figure, but for the sculpture itself, right? How do I make it secure? You know, all that stuff. It's not complicated, but you know, just an extra step that I probably wouldn't have done on my own. Just being honest. But if you have the desire to do it, that is a great way to learn. Uh, hey, what's up, Rafa? Doing good. Glitter says studying at least 10,000 hours. Sure, the more you study, the better. The better you're gonna get. Honestly, that's how it works. It's just like exercising, right? You can be doing all the exercises the wrong way, but if you're exercising every day consistently, you're still gonna get stronger. <laughs> And you're still going to be getting better. Maybe not optimally, yes, but um, if you're not exercising every day and not doing the right amount, right? And you're trying to learn how to be efficient, that doesn't make any sense, right? You should at least be exercising every day for the right amount for you to even be considering how to be more efficient with your workouts, right? If that makes sense. No one ever starts off doing things perfectly. Nobody. Let's see. Actually, all this is supposed to go to this joint. It doesn't have to, but if I'm going by bat wing anatomy, it is supposed to. I guess I will try to match it up or I'll just adjust or adjust the mid that joint area make it lower Yeah, let's just make it three. Simpler read. Maybe I'll try to incorporate some of that chicken chicken wing look to it too, somehow.
Hey, Julian. Uh, Renee says, yeah, that makes sense. Got to do more. I was considering learning and drawing individual muscles, like without skin, so I can see even muscle fibers. Yeah, all that stuff works. For sure. Those things are important. Uh, Julian says, there are also apps that show you the muscles and some of them also have animations. That's cool. That's how I do it and books parallel to it. Glitter says cavemen drew perfectly without practice. Uh, <laughs> yep. According to their standards, they were perfect, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rafa asked, have you ever explored the NFC world with your artwork? Uh, I think you're talking about NFTs, right? Unless, correct me if I'm wrong, Rafa. Uh, NFTs, the uh, the crypto stuff. Uh, I thought about it. I just don't have time. I if I had time, yes, I would look into all that stuff for fun, just for fun, just to try out. Uh, I definitely think students should be looking into that for sure. Um, I would be if I were you. Again, I I'm just too busy. But yes, that's something that is very, very interesting, the NFT space. Uh, it stands for non-fungible tokens. But yeah, uh, I hear some people are making a ton of money off of that. Uh, so why not, you know? Anything to give us more freedom as artists, right? To do what we want to do, I think is great. Anything that gives you like more control as an artist, um, yeah, all that stuff I think is great. Where you reap all the profits. <laughs> and you can draw whatever you want. That's always, I'm all for that stuff. I'm sick and tired of people telling me what to draw. <laughs> That's why I'm drawing this chicken dragon. <laughs> No, nah, I'm just joking, like half joking, right? Like, uh, obviously if I'm working for a company or, a, you know, for someone, I do what they tell me to do, right? I mean, it's not my business. I'm doing what they're telling me to do. And that makes sense. But I doesn't mean I can't get sick of it. I can get sick of it. <laughs> and that happens to almost everybody, I think. Almost everybody. And then they end up changing their jobs or taking a break from what they're doing. Or they they do other things to compensate for their emptiness and hate for their job. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just messing around. But half joking. You know, p people take up other hobbies um, just to fulfill, have like some fulfillment in their life. Things like that, you know. They just live for the weekend, which is kind of sad too. Um, but that's reality for most people, I guess. Have to have some kind of escape, right? If your job itself isn't fulfilling. But that's why people have jobs that they love. It's awesome, you know, that's rare. Uh, I, I guess that's what a lot of us are trying to do, right? Most of us. Or at least uh, the people that you work with. If they're cool, it makes a huge difference, honestly. That almost is bigger than like enjoying the actual work you do is enjoying working with the people that you work with. That's almost more important to me, at least uh, from my experience. Because the work itself, uh, it gets old sometimes. You get like used to it. You're doing this day in a day. What do you call it? Just all the time, right? Day in, day out, right? That's what I was trying to say. So I've been doing this for over almost 20 years now. I guess it is about 20 years now. 
So it just becomes more about the people you're working with. That's what makes it fun. And a cool project doesn't hurt. <laughs> some feathers on the wings too for the silhouette. Uh, Julian asks, is this Chicken Dragon Mrs. Fuzzball? No, this, Miss Fuzzball? No, this is uh, Dragon's Breath. This is the other chicken that my kids like. Uh, it's a Rhode Island Red variety. Uh, the other one, Fuzzball, is a uh, Buff Orphington variety. Buff Orphington is actually a very like pretty looking chicken. It reminds me of like a uh, a golden retriever. <laughs> it's the color of a golden retriever and it looks kind like one too. Their personalities are very docile. It's weird to be talking about chickens even now though for me because again, I had no interest in chickens before. Chickens are just a bird that I eat. <laughs> I guess that's how I saw it. I think that's how most people see chickens. Um, but now I have like a connection to chickens. I appreciate them and I like them. <laughs> Admittedly, I still eat chicken, <laughs> but I just appreciate them more. It does feel a little weird when I think about it. When I'm eating chicken, I'm like, oh, this could have been fuzzball. <laughs> I would never eat fuzzball. <laughs> or dragon's breath. Maybe if I'm starving, I might. <laughs> but other than that, for that reason, I would never.
sorry, but that's probably the truth. All right, let's uh, let me just make some fill some of these up so that the silhouette stands out a little better. And then uh, we're going to start painting her up. Whoops. Yeah, this is more chicken than dragon, I guess, but I didn't want it to look too much like a dragon because then it defeats the whole purpose of it looking like dragon's breath or uh, the chicken that we have. It'll look too different, I think. So I'm happy with this direction. Let's keep going with it. Gonna darken it up overall. And then lighten it up. Oops. Something like that. Uh, Julian says, oh, they really look like golden retrievers. Also, the dark ones look mystical. Yeah, they really do remind me of, like, a golden retriever chicken, basically. <laughs> They're soft, too. Their feathers are very soft. Not all chickens are like that. Some of the, some chickens, their feathers are, like, rougher, right? But uh, the buff Orphingtons are very soft. Um... There's, Julian's asking, are the dark one males? There's different uh, kinds of buff Orphingtons, uh, like different colors. So they have black ones too, but there's many, many different colors. Uh, I think there's like blue ones, lavender ones. Um, blue meaning like there's a hint of blue in it, I think. It's not like blue, blue. Um, but yeah, if you look up the history of um, buff Orphingtons, there's many, they're bred to have uh, many different colors. I think it started with a black one, actually. Anyways, let's keep going. I'm going to play around with the uh, comb area and make it bigger. Yeah, that looks cooler. A mohawk. Yeah, let's do that. That looks funnier. I'm gonna start with the eye. Sometimes I will start with the eyes just to connect with my creature drawing. I don't know if any of you do that. But sometimes I will do that. I want to feel a connection to my drawing or to the thing I'm creating. So I start with the eyes and the face in general. So I feel inspired.
I'm gonna try some overlay real quick to uh, add in some color variation where the red parts of the waddle and uh, the comb are gonna are gonna you know what those areas will look like color wise give myself a better idea of where that's gonna be and the transition what transition areas I need make this a multiply actually oops Oh boy, I'm out of coffee right now. All right, so I'm gonna change the color up a little bit, make it more orangey for the body area. Slightly more yellowish as it goes down lower. Whoops. How did that happen? Oh. I have a tangent right here where the wing intersects with or overlaps the body right at the exact point so it looks odd it lines up like that do you know what I mean so I'm gonna have to adjust that later but I'm just gonna keep going for now The chicken's element's gonna be fire, of course, glitter. <laughs> Her name is Fire's Breath. Or sorry, what am I saying? Dragon's Breath. Ah, I need more coffee. <laughs> Dragon's Breath, fire, yes. Oh, I guess, I guess, I guess you're right, sorry. It could, it could mean a lot of different things, right? It doesn't mean it's fire, I guess, you're right. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I guess it's not obvious. You didn't want to assume. 
But yeah, it's fire. It's a Rhode Island red, so it's red, so we're gonna go with fire. I'm not sure what color to make the wing area, but like I don't know if I want the bottom part to be. I might make it a desaturated red. I'm not sure yet. We'll just keep it like that for now. I know it looks super dark right now, but now this past that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lighten everything up or start adding a uh, light to this. Uh... Oh, actually, sorry, I forgot to, um... forgot to add some yellows for the beak. I'm gonna do that first with some overlay. That's good. So these are my base colors, right? And my base value. I have all the details, indication of details I need. So it gives me some direction, right? As I'm gonna put lighting on this. When I'm adding the lighting, all I'm thinking of is showing maximum form. My lighting direction is simply going to be from the viewer's angle, top down, slightly from the left. Uh, so somewhere around here. All right. I think I'm just going to go on a normal layer and see if that works. Part of me feels like this base isn't dark enough in a few areas, but I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, it's not dark enough, especially when I want if I want it to be uh, darker, like overall as it like the chicken is supposed to be darker. So let me go back here. That looks super dark, huh? All right, let's just go with it. Oh man, super bright.
Not sure about that color. I'm gonna try to make it more reddish. Yeah, that looks a little better. Yeah, send me some coffee, some good cold brew. <laughs> Glitter says fire, so he's uh, hot wings. Yeah, I'll make him into. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Julian says, Are you using right now reference for this chicken? Uh, I have reference up. It's not. um. So I'm referring to it once in a while. Sure. I'm not like trying to get it like 100% accurate. If that's what you're asking. Uh, I'm just referring. There's an image up on my other screen. Um, that I'm looking at. Yeah, it always helps to have reference. For sure. That's what I keep telling this. All my students. Use reference, please. And uh, more than half of them still don't listen to me. I beg them. Please use reference. Please do studies. That's how you're going to get better. I mean, as you, as you get more experienced, um, as an artist, you're just going to get, and, and if you know, experience with using reference, right? It's just going to get easier and easier in how you use reference. Like you're, you're going to become more efficient with how you use it. Like in the beginning, I know like some students, they'll like stick very closely to reference because you know, they don't know what else to do which is fine, you know, it takes time to figure out how to use reference correctly or in a more efficient way, right? Because uh, I'm just looking at it real quick and then I just see like certain things I want to apply into my concept or into my own image, right? It's not like I'm looking at it and going, what does it look like exactly, right? Does this go here or this go here? You know what I mean? It's not like that. You can't use reference like that. In the beginning, again, it's okay. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, but I'm just using it to indicate, to give the same idea, like in this case, like with the textures, right? This comb has like this weird, like pebbly texture. It looks like chicken skin, I guess. <laughs> so I'm trying to incorporate some of that in here. I might have overdone it, so I'm going to like paint over a lot of it, but I like the texture looks interesting, so trying to incorporate some of that in here so it looks like an alien zombie chicken dragon it looks like a tumor growth actually weird I might change up how I'm doing this here. Uh... <laughs> that looks weird to me. Uh... Yeah, not sure if I like that. I'm going to cut this part out. So, you know, I tried it. 
don't really like it. I'm wondering if I could adjust it to make it work, but I don't think I can. Should we just switch it to a zombie chicken? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Julian says, using reference makes designing so much easier. Yep. Because you can just kind of copy a lot. Really reached a new skill level after starting using it. Yeah. I wouldn't, I mean, I know you just use the word copy, but yeah, it's not really copying that you want to do, but it's like you're doing a study of observation real quick while you're creating your own artwork, just observing it super, super quick. Try to make these uh, comb the comb on her head sharper. So start a chicken series you combine a chicken with something each week <laughs> yeah maybe maybe it's your idea renee i if i go with it <laughs> if people hate it then <laughs> i'm gonna say it's your idea i'm just joking um martin says is this a realistic version of the evil chicken from runescape oh is there an evil chicken from runescape I don't know. I just, I, I don't think I've played RuneScape. Ah, I see it now. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily look evil. Did it do, oh. Did it do crazy things in the game? Mutton Roshi. Roshi says, uh, where, where there aren't any game programming content in CG Spectrum channel. Why aren't there? Are you asking why aren't there any game programming content in CG Spectrum channel? Are you talking about the Slack channel? Um, I don't know why. Sorry, Roshi. Uh, you can ask, uh, why don't you email them? Email uh, CG Spectrum and ask them. Tell them you want it. If there's enough, if they get enough demand for it, maybe they'll create it. 
you Roshi, you want well, you want to do game programming, like coding. Uh, Blasphemer says chicken vampire. Yeah, that sounds interesting. <laughs> Mummy chicken. That sounds like fun. Actually, I, I think a zombie chicken would be fun to do for me. I like zombies. Uh, Renee says, uh, I'm very curious and concerned about a vampire chicken. <laughs> curious and uh, concerned. Uh, Martin says, back then the evil chicken appeared before random players near chicken coops and would attack them, effect effectively killing low-level players. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> That'd be sad to be killed by a chicken in the game, right? That's funny. Like, how'd you die? I got killed by a chicken. I forgot these were supposed to be indication of scales. I completely forgot. Isn't that funny? I was like, what are these things? The indication was too rough to the point where I couldn't tell what it was. Alright, for the beak, we'll go a little bright, brighter, a little more saturated.
Uh, Julian says, which one do you like more, slow or fast zombies? I think I like uh, slow zombies better. I'm not sure. In the beginning, when they first came out with the uh, faster zombies, I thought it was weird. It might be just because I wasn't used to seeing fast zombies, but I always imagine zombies are just slow, you know what I mean? And there's just a mass of them, right? That's what makes it uh, difficult to kill them. It's not that they're fast. Um, yeah, so I initially I didn't really like the fast zombies. Yeah. I just thought it didn't make sense. Like, their bodies are falling apart. Why are they so fast, you know? So, yeah, if I had to make a decision, I would say I like slower zombies better. <laughs> They're easier to kill. <laughs> I think that's what makes them more appealing as zombies, is that they're so... You know, that's what makes them unique to me, is that they're slow, yet they're so persistent, right? Like, unless you crush their brain or shoot them in the brain, they're going to keep coming at you. But if they're, like, super fast, then, I don't know, that's just weird to me. To me, that they're not zombies anymore. I'm getting hungry. I can hear my stomach growl. I guess I'll draw a tongue to you. Eventually.
Oops, that looks weird. <laughs> that looks funny. Maybe it's a little too big. Last humor says, I mean, a T-Rex is basically just a gigantic chicken as well, right? Yep, I guess so. Kind of looks like it, right? That's true. With uh, tiny arms, huh? <laughs> Little fork arms. The highlights on the uh, feathers, I'm going to make a, light, a cooler tone or temperature. Something more neutral to cool. Just indicating it real quick to see if it works. And I think it does work. like a demonic chicken now <laughs> all right thanks everyone for hanging out today it was fun i hope you guys all have a great week and uh that you all work super super hard stay focused and uh keep going with your art all right all right i will see you next monday everyone see ya bye